Hello. This is probably an unfamiliar voice to you. However, today we'll be talking about a post-decal dive into design. I'm your guest lecturer, Miles Domingo, and we're going to be talking about design resources and tips for you to learn outside this classroom. So who am I? That's me. Um, so a bit of my background, again, I'm Miles. I'm a third year CS major. Uh, if you don't know me, I taught this decal for two semesters um, from last semester and the semester before that, and have been an active member of Design Queen at Berkeley. Here's me teaching uh, my final lecture two semesters ago. And so I've been really involved with teaching about web design, and I'm here today as a guest lecturer brought to you by Diana and Heidi and Howie um, to talk to you guys about tips outside of this classroom. But that's not about me. So actually, no, here's more about me. Um, so here's some of my projects that I do. I've done a lot of UI and visual design in my spare time, and I've taught a few um, workshops at Hex. You might have heard about Hex and other uh, innovative design events uh, at announcements at lectures, but mostly uh, I've been doing uh, these types of designs into my work and I like talking about them and teaching about tools um, like Figma and Adobe XD and whatnot to get people into this sort of field. And so for our goals for today, I have uh, three sort of principles and values that I would like to talk about here. And so first thing I wanted to talk about is like to be able to link back at what you learned, right? So you guys spent 12 weeks in this decal. You guys learned about web design from scratch. You started with HTML, you styled with CSS. You learned about design principles, applied those design principles, even did a bit of coding, right? So now like we we're talking about bigger picture, right? What's next? What's beyond sort of, you know, these 12 weeks and what can you do with these skills that you've learned and push yourself to learn uh, here in web design decal. The next thing uh, to talk about is like curiosity during classes. And what I mean by that is like, you know, design as a field often requires a lot of research. And so like not everything is sort of neat and contained uh, into a sort of class setting where you're constantly receiving support and you're constantly receiving feedback and assignments and sort of set goals. And sometimes you have to find those for yourself. Luckily, it's not as daunting as it may seem. It just takes a bit of research, effort, and time, and we'll be able to sort of succeed in whatever design or front-end centric field uh, we'll be uh, trying to aim for, and we'll get there. And lastly, uh, a roadmap to success, right? So again, like what is it that I have to do outside of this classroom to be successful? We'll sort of talk about uh, skills that you can dive deeper into, right, based off of what you learned already. So front-end development, visual design, um, things like Figma or Adobe XD, prototyping tools that may seem familiar to you, as well as um, animation and UX. All of those things wrapped uh, into a neat sort of package uh, to be able to succeed even further. And so there are probably like three categories of people that I'd like to classify like after taking this decal. Um, so like I usually see it with a lot of my past students, right? And like a lot of how they feel about this class. And so like the first category, for example, is like, you know, like maybe this decal was a mistake, right? It's like, ah, shit, I thought web design was cool because, you know, I did as a kid. But now it's like, wait, this is just really complicated. I'm stressed and like my final project and like, ah, right. And so like maybe it wasn't exciting as it used to be. And like, you know, with the whole remote situation going on, maybe like this is not your biggest, you know, biggest achievement ever or biggest like uh, most wanted time commitment, essentially. And so I just want to say, you know, congrats. You did something difficult in a uncertain time. Go you, go challenge yourself more often. Um, even from this class, like even if you haven't created the most perfect thing, I think you can be able to look at websites and sort of appreciate like their beauty and their complexity and like 
the skills required it takes to build something like that. And so in that sense, it's like a sort of convoluted form of art appreciation, right? Like you kind of torture yourself for like 12 weeks and you can be like, wow, that's actually amazing because I know like the reasoning and the coding behind it. And so, you know, while our staff is like amazing and like we really work hard and our best to ensure a great experience, we do have our shortcomings. And so as much as we try to make everyone enjoy this class, uh, sometimes it's just a bit rough behind the scenes. And so maybe you're this category and that's okay. Um, you finished your final project, but you don't think it's perfect, right? I definitely felt that way. Many people have definitely felt that way. Welcome to the cycle. Um, so this is sort of the state of perpetual growth that you'll see. And so sort of that feeling of like wanting to rebuild and restart uh, is going to be constant and it's never actually going to go away. And that's okay. You're growing as a sort of designer and a developer. So don't be afraid to start over again, right? You may start again with nothing, but now you have sort of 12 weeks of experience and knowledge in your hands. Um, and so what you want to be able to do now is to like sort of reflect and critique on your own work. Like what went well? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Take other people into the equation. Like what do they think about it? Like what's their feedback? And sort of incorporate it and use, you know, those thoughts and reflections in order to create a new, you know, art piece, whether it's a website or a personal website or a business website or something even more abstract than that. And so the idea is that like the hard work and discipline that you put into these skills is much greater than any sort of natural talent um, or intelligence when it comes to building websites from scratch. And uh, pardon me if I'm like, these transitions seem weird. I'm alternating between mouse and keyboard and it's like a little bit uh, messy. But last category of people, you know, like, wow, you really enjoyed this class. And so thank you for enjoying this class, right? But now, like, what do you want to do, right? Um, so maybe you're interested in design. We're going to be talking about a few design clubs and organizations that help you find your skills needed as a designer. Um, if you're interested in more sort of programming technical side, there's way more than enough, like, computer science organizations. We'll be talking about those as well. Uh, and lastly, just like being able to dive deep into various other fields. We're going to be talking a bit about like what is human centered design? What is design thinking? Like, I think uh, front end development's already covered, but the idea is that we want to be able to sort of dive deep into these topics and then keep on making, right? Use these experiences to create new things. And so, you know, I'm really happy when. Uh, I see students like go out to these organizations, right? Like, uh, and or like create new things, and like I keep up with them, like through Facebook, right? Through social media, you kind of just see them passively all around, and it makes me really happy to see the things that our students are doing. So if this is you, you know, good on you. All right, so uh, we get a list of frequently asked questions. So these are questions that we get asked every semester. Uh, we haven't collected questions from you, but these questions are probably questions you want to answer anyways. So these are from last semester. Uh, I'm just going to go quickly through them in sort of lightning round fashion to talk about um, what I believe are sort of the answers to these questions. Anyways, so uh, firstly, what resources can I use to continue learning after this class? Uh, first of all, um, all our resources, all our resources per semester, are guaranteed for life, uh, or as long as our website stays up. Um, by that, I mean that uh, even after the semester, you can continue to log on uh, through your account and continue to see lectures, lecture materials um, from your semester, and be able to reference them throughout um, your time at Berkeley or time, you know, through life or whatever. And you can continue to use those resources indefinitely while you learn more about web design. Um, things that I like using personally, right, is includes like Medium. So Medium is a blog post uh, article col collaboration between writers, right? Uh, you may have seen it through your readings in class. I really enjoy Medium. A uh, few of my favorite sort of authors include 
uh, thing, organizations like the UX Collective or Free Code Camp or uh, JavaScript in plain English. Uh, so those like organizations really put together uh, work of authors to uh, assemble content around front-end development and design. Uh, and you will see really high quality content there. And so I really like supporting uh, my content creators. Like I'm the one who pays $5 a month to you know, get beyond that paywall. And while it's not entirely necessary, I usually like to um, support that idea by thinking about like $5 as like a cup of boba, right? We're in quarantine right now, you can't even get boba. So support your artists, continue to read. I feel like I've read you know, dozens if not hundreds of articles and they've all been really helpful in sort of understanding the nuances of the fields that I'm really interested in, such as design and front-end development. Dribble is another one, that's Dribble with three Bs, right? So you get to see people's portfolio artwork and you can get inspired in an easy manner by other people's work, right? Uh, if you saw our art uh, here, this is art by Timo uh, Kielder. So this is something I found on Tribble that really expresses like the sort of aesthetic that I was going for. And so I included his credits here uh, this was found on Triple, and so I really like to get inspired uh, by looking at other people's work and trying to incorporate their styles into my own. And lastly, Instagram. I think Instagram is an interesting part because it's sort of passive. Uh, if you start looking into design on Instagram, right, the algorithms will sort of tailor your experiences towards that topic. And so while you're scrolling and like you know goofing around on your phone, you'll sort of learn a few things possibly here and there and maybe you'll sort of dive deep into a rabbit hole. I like it because it's passive and I don't have to think about like, oh, I should, you know, do research actively. It's sort of just there and I can like view it and it, it, it comes to me rather than me sort of seeking it out on myself. All right, what do I do when I hit a wall? I find it personally hard to progress and I find myself staring at whatever I have with no progress. Um, I definitely feel that. Uh, whenever I do a side project, I feel like a lot of what I do is just staring like at walls and like like blank screens and you know like the sort of Figma document or Adobe XD document that's just blank and just there and just staring at me. Um, so I think partially part of that is sort of burnout. And so I definitely recommend if you're like really feeling like emotionally drained, um, I would you know take a break. Uh, I like playing Animal Crossing. Uh, it has been very helpful during these times, but whatever, you know, helps you relax and helps you feel more comfortable. Uh, I definitely found that I don't necessarily lose progress when I take a break, right? It's just sort of being able to reinvigorate yourself um, and start with a fresh mind. That's not to say you shouldn't be able to challenge yourself. It just sort of, you know, you want to be the best self that you can be in sort of any uh, given situation. Yeah. Okay. So next question is how competitive it is it to get a solid design job at a leading tech company? And so, and do their backgrounds come from art or visual media? And so um, to answer the second question first, actually, the answer is no. Uh, usually people from uh, that are designers in these sort of tech companies do not necessarily come from art or media backgrounds. Uh, actually, it doesn't even matter sort of whatever background you have. The most important thing to understand is that for being able to land a solid design job, and we'll be talking about a bit more, uh, is to be able to sort of think as a designer. And so there's a whole field of UX research centered around this concept called design thinking. And that's being able to find out human needs and desires and, and create experiences that address uh, and provide solutions for those want, needs and desires. And so that doesn't necessarily come from the art or visual media background, but rather, you know, through experience and like port and projects and portfolio building. And so a lot of my advice probably here will be to start creating, you know, whatever it is. And we'll, we'll go through some examples of like mine and what I've done in the past. And so it is very competitive, right, as all things, I would say as competitive as any other programming job. 
Um, I do not personally have as much experience in sort of doing the design recruitment process, so we will not be going over that today. However, uh, one resource that I like to use and that I, our uh, past staff has been on is Cofolios. And so here is a website where you can discover design opportunities and people uh, who uh, participate in said opportunities and you can be able to contact them and talk to them and get to know them um, and their experiences and how they found success. And we'll be talking about like what questions you have to ask them to like figure out what you want to do, right? And so like I definitely recommend this resources. The link is here down below. Uh, and yeah, well, I definitely recommend looking at these uh, webs this website, look at their resumes, right? What types of things that they did. You'll see that, you know, it doesn't really matter what background it's called. They can be cog side, they can be computer science, they can be art, they can be law. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So what are some design projects that we can do just on our own? How do you recommend we get into design? Well, I mean, technically, you built a website all on your own. Sure, granted, there are people there to teach you, people there to debug, but you know the work and the code you did hopefully was still you know your own, and like you built it with you know the tools you were given from scratch, and so that's already a design project in itself, and it can be a showcase for your own portfolio or your future portfolio. And so what are some other design projects that we can do on our own? Um, so I think a, a thing that I like recommending is just to be able to start creating in mass. Um, so what I did over summer two summers ago was create sort of a design system for a popular tabletop RPG Dungeons and Dragons. Right, I really wanted to play with my friends, so I just created some mockups in Adobe XD, and it's been a really, you know, fun project to showcase to recruiters, to my friends, to people who've asked me like, how do I get into design? Right. Um, what matters the most is that you are able to get your sort of work out there, and what you'll find is that by doing these types of works, you'll run into sort of unexpected lessons in sort of visual design, like why do things work, right? These, like this looks ugly, this does not. And sort of these things that you can only really find out by sort of diving deep into, you know, the tool that you want to use. Here I use Adobe XD. You can create things in Figma, you can create things in Sketch, Photoshop, whatever you want it to be. Uh, if you're, this is particularly if you're interested in visual design. And in terms of like finding uh, a pro around a project that you want to do, uh, I would think about it in sort of this fashion where, say, like find a either a topic you're passionate about or a problem that you are interested in solving, right? Like what are problems you face in everyday life? Like, oh, I can't, um, you know, figure out like why my alarm isn't waking me up or like I can't figure out like when I should drink water every day and like Sure, those solutions may exist, right? Those applications may exist, but how would you, you know, frame that question and turn that into a solution? Maybe a digital solution, maybe a solution that requires a prototype in XD or Figma, right? And so, like things that can you are able to put a lot of research into, right? I really enjoyed playing Dungeons and Dragons with my friends or like the RPG uh, community in general, so I was able to like really push myself to create something. Um, fresh and new because I was really excited about the whole genre in general. And so being able to find something that you really enjoy and then design around it will help you get that you know, motivation to start designing projects on your own. Hopefully that helps. What are some organizations on campus to join? So here I listed not all, but some uh, organizations that came to mind and that I've seen people go to um, after sort of this decal. And so it's a mix between sort of tech organizations and design organizations. And so if you're interested in tech, things like Codology, Codebase, Wow Who Knew Code, right? Uh, and Blueprint, they're often looking for front end developers or uh, often back end developers. And that, oh, and MDB as well. Um, 
And those, you know, organizations uh, will often like to see like some sort of experience, right? And so being able to, you know, take your programming skills from this class and translating it into, you know, these applications for these organizations are a real plus. Um, in terms of design, we have um, BI, which is really centered around product design and human-centered design. If you're really interested in this org, uh, I recommend talking to Heidi or Aisha about it. Or yeah, and so I would, you know, talk to them about it. They've been in the club. Uh, I haven't, but I personally recommend it. I think I've had a lot of friends who've been in this club, and they've all really enjoyed um, the process of working on real projects, right, that revolve around product design. And so I've seen these projects, I've been to their showcases, they're all really cool um, examples of ways you can be involved in design without diving deep into it as a career. Um, as well as Innovate Design, Innovate Design is a club on campus that is centered around graphic design, photography, and web. And so uh, you probably heard a lot of announcements regarding like Hex and probably RGB. Um, and so they host a lot of events. If you're interested in design, I think RGB is actually this weekend. So I'd definitely check it out if you're interested in design. Like this is, that's actually the most recommended tip. Um, go to this webinar. Um, I am in no way sponsored by this club. I just really enjoy the events that they uh, put out. Um, that being said, I have been on their club, uh, in their club for, as a graphic designer and as a web designer, and it's, I'd say it's pretty neat. And lastly, uh, miscellaneous organizations. I put DC into here uh, because uh, there's a lot of clubs on campus that require sort of a, a designer or a graphic designer or a marketing lead. And so uh, DC, just one of them, right? Um, but there are many clubs and you can like find and sift through like any club that you're even remotely interested in and say like, hey, do you have a design lead? Hey, do you have a marketing lead? And so those, and you can find organizations on from there to join. Um, and lastly, uh, we have AWE and ANOVA, just organizations I think are really cool. Uh, ANOVA does sort of education. Um, and so it's like kind of what we do, right? But for uh, middle schoolers, elementary schoolers, and lastly, AWE, if you're interested in EECS and want to be surrounded by powerful women and have that supportive community. Cool. Uh, that's all for organizations. Hopefully, I didn't spiel too much. Uh, yeah. Okay, how do I get into web design? I took this decal. Haha. Uh, this is my second iteration of my website, I believe. Um, I'm also in that constant state of like wanting to rebuild my website. Yeah, so that's how I got into web design. Uh, I think I met Emily, who was a previous teacher, and she recommended that decal. So word of mouth really spreads. Um, I continue to teach uh, design and web design and the like on the side nowadays. I think it's a really cool process because I, for one, am a personally uh, very visual learner, and so to be able to see things change on screen is a very satisfying process. I also play like Neopets as a kid and Tumblr as a teenager. And so those were like very uh, minimal explorations into HTML and CSS. Cool. Uh, and last question for these frequently asked uh, given that I'm not planning to be a designer, uh, what industries desire design skills on the side? Cool. So I would say that every job within the tech industry requires some sort of design skill. And while it may not be directly designing prototypes and creating mockups and you know pushing things out on Figma or Adobe XD, they require this idea uh, to be able to sort of brainstorm, synthesize, and create solutions and reiterate based off of user feedback, right? So uh, on the left here, we have a simple example of what the design thinking process is like. It has five steps, empathize, define, ideate, prototype, test. You may have heard something similar to this before. Um, the vocabulary can be often quite uh, different at times and can be changing, but I assure you they're all very similar um, to each other. So empathize is where 
you know, you get really connected to your user and try to understand their wants and needs, right? This is through user interviews, this is through surveys, this is through collecting feedback. Uh, and then define is sort of your brainstorming session, or sorry, define is sort of your um, synthesis where you collect those user needs and translate them into ideas or questions, like how might we, right? You might have heard of that before, like how might we solve a particular issue or address a particular problem? And then so ideate the sort of solutions, you draw them out, you conceptualize um, those um, answers to those defined problem spaces, prototype, you actually build it, those solutions out, whether it's in digital or a physical format, and lastly, test where you try them out in the field and you see how people react to them, right? Is this a potential solution? Is this a, you know, worthy product? And so given that these set of design skills, like, are probably um, not going to be used directly, right, um, by most people if you're not planning to be a designer, like, how might it be useful? Well, I mean, for most companies, they're building out a product, right? And you want to be able to understand, like, why is it, why are we doing the things that we're doing in order to make our company successful or our product successful? And so you'll often find, especially um, revolving around sales, um, we'll talk about a bit about different design fields, not necessarily directly as a visual designer, but sales. Um, anything related to design, development, all of these things are sort of within the process of uh, these design thinking methods. Sorry, so like a bit of a cough. Okay, cool. And so the second to last thing, or actually, I think we have a few things left, but design fields. And so what we have here uh, is the thing that I was mentioning where it's like, you know, design is not necessarily a um, one lane field where you're only building out digital applications or things like prototypes or, you know, creating things from Dribbble and like translating them into your own work, right? It's not just about um, sort of that sort of visual design. And so there are different parts of the process, as you might have seen, uh, I might have labeled the colors similarly to reflect that uh, by no means they're they are in sort of that stage or confined to that stage but the idea here is that for any part of the process you enjoy and any part of the process you're particularly strong in right um, there are fields or titles or roles right you'll find these often uh, these terms used when it comes to uh, defining roles in a job listing for example you'll find that these roles um, can be suited to you. And oftentimes, even these roles are not even exclusive to each other, right? Uh, they can be sort of intermingled with uh, one another. And so these skills are not exclusive. Uh, they can be applied to many different situations. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is UX designer. So this is like sort of putting the pieces together. Actually, even before that, let's talk about uh, graphic designer, right? So this is uh, the thing that we are most familiar with, right? We create visual designs, we create mockups, web components, art for branding, etc. Right? You build out, for example, your midterm project. You built it around a certain brand, right? A certain style. Um, and so, if you're if you like creating visual designs and like, you know, using tools like Figment or Adobe XD, the graphic designer role would probably be suited towards you. If we're talking about UX research, this is uh, sort of the empathize phase uh, of the UX design thinking process, right? So we're talking to people, we're interviewing them, we're trying to understand their pain points, their problems to everyday life. And so this is a valuable skill because, you know, people are not always explicit in what they want and what they need, right? You can't necessarily ask someone like, hey, you know, what is it that you need right now? You sort of figure it out through the stories and experiences they tell. And so um, the goal is to translate those experiences and stories into something that uh, can turn into a product or a solution. 
So a UX designer, right, is taking, uh, it's also, you know, intermingled with a graphic designer and UX researcher, but UX designer is the idea that we're putting these pieces together, right, these mock-ups, uh, these uh, experiences and ideations from UX research and creating, um, you know, prototypes based off of that, or like, sorry, assets from branding and putting it with research to create mock-ups and prototypes. Uh, you have product managers. So we're talking about uh, all aspects of the products. We're talking about strategy, design, and technical engineering. You're sort of overseeing, you know, these different groups of people and making and you have like sort of a product vision and seeing like you know have this foresight to see like where is our company going where is our business going right and being able to direct um, direct people's um, actions towards those goals that you foresee and lastly if you you know are a product designer uh, you sort of love all of these things and you're sort of a generalist that specializes in each part of this process, right? So UX design, graphic design, research, you know, management, being able to put everything together, you have a sort of product designer. And so while these definitions still may seem a little bit fuzzy, hopefully that clears up um, a little bit of the distinctions between those fields. And so I would definitely look, you know, when you're talking to people, like figure out like what their title is and like what is it that they do and ask questions around those, those sort of things. So yeah, those is a that's a quick example uh, into design fields. So uh, last thing, this is the last thing we're talking about. So how to talk to people, right? Um, this is a frequently, you know, used piece of advice, like talk to people, you know, get their connection, network. You know what's the worst that could go wrong so oftentimes like people are like you know you know what happens if you know they don't talk to me or like they, they block me or like you know like sort of fear of uh, being that guy or like being in a or being viewed as a person who's only looking to network and sort of being you know that sort of snake or whatever you might call it um, I assure you that most people are kind and receptive to your questions and um, anything that you might ask about them right so I will share you my worst experience about talking to people and why that could guy could go fuck off uh, yeah so this is also just like a bit of a funny story I like talking about so um, this is a guy on Instagram right I was talking about like how I like viewing art on Instagram um, so this was like he was making like these really cool blob animations. I didn't. I was still learning at the time. I was curious, like, hey, how did you make those blobs, right? Like, how did you make them like sort of float and make them like feel like they're very like fluid and whatnot? And so like you know, I DM'd him through Instagram. As you can see, I was left on red, and then uh, I got included into a passive aggressive post where he was like. You know, if our first interaction through DM is asking me how to make something, I will ignore you. And so not only did he leave me on red, he put me on full blast in front of his entire target audience, uh, bashing me for wanting to learn something new. And I assure you, fuck that guy, right? I put his Twitter at here because fuck that guy. I assure you that, again, most people are kind and willing to help. And so much so that I included a link to a really cool tool, blobmaker.app, that makes sort of these blob animations, or the sort of setup to make these blob animations. And so, you know, when people reject you in this sort of outlandish manner, right, you're not the one that's being inadequate, they're just the asshole. So, you know, most people are kind, so let's just assume, like, we're, we're willing as, like, people here to, like, share the knowledge uh, that we've learned and then sort of pass it on. Yeah, so again, I re really, really recommend Cofolios. Uh, this is a different aspect of their website. So earlier I showcased portfolios. Uh, this is their office hours, right? This is their office hours. And so here you're able to see listings of people who are actually willing to talk to you, right? Willing to schedule 
an appointment you appointment with you uh, to talk about their experiences and your questions about design and the role and they are far more qualified than I am to talk about this and so that's why I recommend uh, especially because these are people who have gone and succeeded in their careers whether it's internship what internships whether it's full-time right so these are people uh, graduating or outside of college uh, and you can talk to them right and schedule an appointment uh, links down below cofolios.com slash office hours and uh, figure out what is it that you want to do outside of this class um, again so like when you know we're talking about things usually you want to talk about like how you know feedback for, for a personal project right or like how do I create something or how do I get started right so like what I why am I showcasing my personal project again? I use it, you know, when I'm talking to these people as like a sort of talking point, like, hey, like, what do you feel about this? Like, is this the right direction, right? Is this like something that you want to, this is something that people are looking for in their portfolios and like being able to have a side project and getting feedback at the same time is a uh, valuable skill or a valuable thing to be able to have because not only will you be getting advice, you'll be also be getting feedback on your current work. I think that's why I put the slide here. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, I forgot one slide. Sorry, give me a second. Uh, there is one slide I was missing. Okay, we're gonna go here. Sorry, uh, just a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, as you can see, I am designing these slides in Figma. Um, might have missed the arrow here, but. Uh, for portfolios, you want to be able to ask, you know, the right questions, right? So here I just listed a bunch of questions that uh, may help you understand and uh, figure out, like, what is it, or figure out the most from their experiences. So to learn more about their role is, right, ask about their journey. Uh, why is it, why is it that they work where they work? How do they get to where they are, right? Why are they interested in the products? Um, design culture is also a big thing, right? Like what companies have a specific culture. And so like, why is it that they're working at that company uh, with that specific culture, right? And so also people uh, who post their work online also have a rich social media background. And so to be able to suck their social, <laughs> to social medias and understand who they are helps you bring back uh, a bit into their style, right now, their style and uh, their artwork. And so I think Twitter is a personally great platform to connect to designers. There's a whole design community uh, waiting for you to DM them and make it trying to make a connection. And also they're like, they all try to be like quirky and funny. And so, you know, being able to like their tweets and like show like, hey, you're, you know, you're kind of a cool guy, like, you know, gasses them up a bit to be able to talk to you. And so, yeah, if you're interested, right, if you're like interested in them, they'll be more likely and willing to help you, right? If you're interested in their work, interested in like what they say and what they do, uh, they're more willing to help you out. And so like this was the missing slide I was forgetting. But if we zoom through these, sorry about that. I was missing that. Yeah, chat with me. Um, my email is here down below. Uh, I can talk about front end. I can talk about design. Uh, I can talk about how I made these slides, right? My journey to post decal for me, right? From instructing this class has been uh, pretty insane. I taught a slide design decal for a few weeks. Um, and that has been a lot of work. And so if you're interested in how I made these slides, right? I would have like this full like prototype here as you can see right as an outline uh, this is one of my passion projects and what i do talk to me email me uh whatever questions you may have and lastly here's your attendance word i was asked to give this to you uh attendance word is so dollars so this is your last class Woo. good luck on your finals guys and thank you for listening